brass, I will bring gold, and for iron, I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stone, iron. The Lord said that on the Heavenly Father's right hand, there are pleasures evermore. And it says that I have not seen, neither ear heard the things which the Lord has prepared for them that wait for him. You know, there's a whole another world of greatness that awaits us when the kingdom of heaven is established. It's not seen in this society. In this society, we only see carnal things that reason offers in this society. But when the kingdom is established, the Lord is going to open us up to a whole nother world. You know, of pleasure, of knowledge, of wisdom, understanding. You know, just, I mean, can't even be put into words. You know, because our imagination only goes with so far. And the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third a Chalcedony, the fourth an Emerald, the fifth Sardonyx, the sixth Sardius, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth a Topaz, the tenth a Chrysopasis, the eleventh a Jacinth, the twelfth an Amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Let my soul bless Yahweh, the great king. For Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones, thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. And the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with beryl and carbuncle and stones of Ophir. And all her streets shall say, Alleluia. And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be Yahweh, which have extolled it forever. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertain unto the house of the Lord. The altar of gold and the table of gold whereupon the showbread was, and the candlesticks of pure gold. Five on the right side and five on the left before the oracle with the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold and the bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold and the hinges of gold both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house to wit of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Beside that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold. Six hundred shekels of gold went into one target. And he made three hundred shields of beaten gold. Three pound of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side on the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the stays, and twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other upon the six steps. There was not a like made in any kingdom, and all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold, none were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. But the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish, with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. The Lord said that on the Heavenly Father's right hand there are pleasures evermore. And it says that I have not seen, neither ear heard the things which the Lord has prepared for them that wait for him. You know, there's a whole nother world of greatness that awaits us when the kingdom of heaven is established. It's not seen in this society. In this society, we only see carnal things that reason offers in this society. But when the kingdom is established, the Lord is going to open us up to a whole nother world. 
you know, of pleasure, of knowledge, of wisdom, understanding, you know, just, I mean, can't even be put into words, you know, because our imagination only goes but so far.